Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. This is episode 87 of Child Care Rockstar Radio, featuring coach Brian Dupre. Hey, everybody. It's your host, Chris Murray, here at Child Care Rockstar Radio, and thanks for coming back to the podcast. I am um, just over the moon about this episode, and we're going to dive right in without a big intro. We are two weeks out from the Child Care Success Summit, Child Care Reimagined 2020, Uh, If you are listening to this live and in less than two weeks, we're going to be kicking off the uh, incredible event. Um, So I need you to actually go, if you still don't have your ticket, to childcaresuccesssummit.com and you only have a handful of days to get in and experience this incredible three-day virtual event with myself, Simon Sinek, Trent Shelton, and so many more amazing speakers, incredible content, the best networking on the planet with owners and leaders who are wanting to up their game and take their life and their business to the next level. And if you want to be part of that amazingness, you got to be there. You got to be there live with us, live virtually. So the cool thing about this year, you don't have to get on an airplane. You don't have to go anywhere. You can just relax. You can get in your jammies. You can watch the sessions with a glass of wine or a mocktail in your hand and just experience all the goodness. And so we're going to making it super easy for you with this event. It's an unprecedented time. It's an unprecedented opportunity at a tiny, tiny fraction of the normal investment. So today's podcast, Mr. Brian Dupre. He became a client in 2015. He came to a child care success summit. He jumped into coaching in the academy. He added over the two years of coaching, uh, he added over a million dollars of revenue to his business, roughly, I think between 850,000 to a million bucks. And he then became a coach in 2017. And he's been coaching ever since and doing strategy sessions with 350 of you. These coaching calls have been game changers for so many of you. And in today's podcast, we get an update on what Coach Dupe is doing with his life, with his beautiful wife, Carol. What are they up to? How do they survive COVID? What are some strategies that they use to leverage their success during this difficult time? How did they reinvent their relationship with their community and with their tribe of Uh, teachers and leaders inside their school. Schools, I should say, they have five locations in Maine. And we talk a lot about being debt-free and amazing but simple practices for building wealth and having business success because if you are deeply in debt, it's difficult to manage uh, multiple locations smartly and deal with these these issues of debt, especially if then something happens with the economy, a recession, a pandemic, what have you, a new president, um, to be able to succeed and survive and thrive. And so we talk about money management. We talk about marketing. We talk about tour secrets. We talk about teacher mindsets and so much more on this amazing episode 87 with Coach Brian Dupre. Without any further ado, let's jump right in. Enjoy. All right. Welcome to the podcast. This is episode 87 featuring coach Brian Dupre. Brian, how are you? Oh man, I'm great, Chris. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Welcome back to the podcast. Brian is on my team here at the Child Care Success Company, but he's not in his normal location of Maine. Where are you right now? Well, Carol and I, my lovely and beautiful, talented wife, Carol, are in Jamaica. On our 28th trip to the beautiful island of Jamaica, we 
we come every three to four months and just had to get away from uh, the COVID world and life in Maine. And the weather has been down the 20s in Maine. So I said, oh, got to go to Jamaica. So it's 90 here and uh, having a good time. Nice. And you are continuing your path of being Jamaicans. Right. Oh, we're we're true Jamaicans. Jamaicans. Sure. 20, <laughs> trip twenty eight. I wonder where you'll max out with how many trips. That's amazing. Um, uh, as long as I'm still alive, I'll be coming down here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so, what's new and good in your world? How's your family doing with everything in the crazy world of twenty twenty? Give us the update. You know, I I got to a point. You know, we came down here in July uh, to Jamaica as well. I was like, you know, I got to live your life. I wasn't going to put my life on hold just because of a, a pandemic, you know, and safe and stuff. And I, you know, I realized that it's it's a stressful being back home, and the stress is starting to build up. So I realized that you need a perspective break. And you know, whether you can get away or not, I think it's important that everybody has that little bit of perspective and mindset mindset shift. Basically, I'm shifting my mindset into one of relaxation. And now I can go back when I get back and work hard for the next seven eight weeks before I go do it again. Nice. I love that. But family's um, good. Uh, yeah. yeah, family's healthy, going well. My daughter's in college now, my the youngest in college, which is exciting. A um, little different because she's half live, half um, video. Um, but that's interesting. My okay. son's doing good and the rest of the kids are good. Grandkids are good. Just don't see them enough. But other than that, as long as we're healthy, that nothing else matters. Right. Absolutely. Uh, what's going on with your schools there at Little Angels? Uh, you've got, I think, five locations in yeah. the Bangor, Maine area. How are your schools uh, faring so far through the pandemic? Yeah, fantastic. Things are great. We had, we had dropped down to about 30% capacity in uh, March and April. <clears throat> we actually had a center closed for renovations uh, over the winter. We kept that closed a little bit longer than we we had anticipated, thanks to COVID. We actually closed one of our centers during the height of the pandemic to consolidate. Uh, but the kids started coming back. We started going back to the techniques that you taught me many years ago, rebuilding, enrollment boot camp strategies. And we built our enrollment back up. We have all five centers open right now. Our occupancy is higher than it was pre-COVID. We're, we're having a really, really good year, um, thanks to what we've learned at the Child Care Success Academy. It's been a, been a good been a good year as far as a pandemic concerned. We're, we have no complaints. We're doing really well. Awesome. And one of the strategies that you've um, that's really in your wheelhouse that you've helped with, people with is cash flow management and how to secure the PPP and the idle and helping guide folks through that when they have questions, uh, also state funding. And those, all of those resources I think you've utilized and um, are probably in a pretty good cash position. Correct. Yeah, I did do an EIDL loan because I didn't need the money. Um, did did do PPP, which helped us keep the employees on the payroll, full payroll. But, you know, I'm debt free. I own all my businesses free and clear, all my locations. I own real estate property. So I wasn't carrying a huge debt load to begin with. And in my book, Talk Your Mentor, I teach that about lowering your debt and having cash reserves. I had considerable cash reserve. So I was able to fare it from a financial perspective without having to worry about my business. And I think toppled the most important part of it, Chris, was the amazing culture that we have. We did not lose one employee. You know, we kept everybody on. We didn't lay anybody off. And it was really a, a good transition into uh, into being back full again. We didn't have to, for, you know, twist people's arms to come back to work. They all wanted to come back because we have an amazing culture. We have a culture because that's what you taught our people uh, in, in your techniques. You taught us have an amazing culture. And we do. And our, our employees are amazing. Yeah. So I think a couple of years ago, you did the core values exercise and you've been really working on your leadership and your culture with your team. Your school is partially run by your daughters and your wife, your beautiful wife, Carol. And so I know that you guys have been like all of our clients, really, you're a coach and a client all at the same time, just constantly getting better, looking for opportunities for improvement and um it's been amazing to watch your brand, like in your brand new website, which launched about six to nine months ago. So every single thing that we teach, you've been implementing over time because you're walking the talk and talking the walk, not just coaching it, but actually doing it, living and breathing it. So I love that. Um, with regard to that, are, looking back on your journey since March 15th, when COVID hit this country, what are a couple things you might point to that were... Um, 
game changers for you? And I know this question wasn't on our agenda, but are, are there things that you implemented? Like one, one that comes to mind, Brian, is your approach to your community. You guys delivered pizza to some of the centers around you that it was like a, a really cool goodwill move for the employees at your competitor schools, just so that you could reach out and kind of wrap your arms around everybody in the ECE community locally. So, you know, how, what are some other kind of secret things that you did or just nuggets that you can share around how you survived this pandemic? And it might be also mindset related. I don't know. That is exact word I was going to say, Chris, <laughs> is, is Carol and I got, got to work and, uh, we realized that this could defeat us or we could defeat it. And so we started with Facebook lives. We, we kept with open transparency with our staff and let them know that we were going to be fine. So we know that they were worried for their job immediately. So we knew we had to calm that fear. So we went into action with, we were Facebook living with them probably every two or three days. We would be bringing them every Monday morning. We brought them Dunkin' Donuts and coffee, tell them how much we love them. And every Friday we would deliver pizza to our staff. Then we realized, you know what, our staff, their mindsets were struggling. So then we started doing it to our competitors around the area because we realized they were in the same boat. And my daughter, Brandy, reached out to our some of our biggest competitors We've been rivals for for years and say, what can we do to help you during this? Because we're all in this crisis together. And it really brought us a sense of, of closeness with the people that we've been adversaries for fighting over the same kids and staff. Where we realized, you know, in the end, we all need to survive this. And it was really nice. And when you focus on helping other people and not just yourself, you get helped in the process. So we took our eyes off ourselves, Carol and I personally, we knew we'd be fine. We knew we had, we had to reassure our staff that things would be okay. And here it is, you know, six months later, we've been into this. Things are great. You know, nobody ever complained about having to wear a mask to work. And, you know, the, the staff has just been wonderful. And I love them to death and wish I could all give them a billion dollars and say, hey, thank you. Wish we can. Um, they're just, <laughs> they just mean so much to me. But uh, anyway, it, it's been yeah. okay. I, I yeah. wish the pandemic had never happened. Of course. Um, and I'll be glad when this is behind us. And, you know, hopefully in six months from now, we'll be, this will be long in the rear view mirror and life will be back to normal. Right. So share with us a preview of your summit workshop. We got, uh, if you're watching this live, this episode will um, go live to the podcast world right before our Child Care Reimagined 2020 Success Summit event. And at that three-day virtual live event, you are doing a breakout workshop on innovative expansion opportunities. Talk a little bit about um, what you'll be sharing and why people should attend that session. Okay, so uh, the ch- first of all, if you haven't bought a ticket to Child Care Reimagine, <laughs> do it today. Um, and if this is after the summit, well, then you might want to buy the recordings of the summit. Tell you, it, it's going to be an amazing event. And that's what changed my business life. Five years ago, Chris, in 2015, um, I thought I knew everything about the child care industry until I came to your event and realized that you knew a heck of a lot more than I did. And if I just listened to you, I could become much more successful, which I did. Thankfully, my wife was smart and she said, you need to talk to her and you need her to coach you, which you did. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, but in this topic, expansion, I've opened nine schools. So expansion has always been my specialty and forte. And one thing I've been teaching for three years is to always do the opposite what everybody else does. For the last two years, everybody's been expand, expand, expand. And I've been on more of a reserved expansion because prices were high. Every Everything was going crazy and everybody was expanding in the markets. And I said that once the reset and recession hits, the other these markets are going to be in trouble. So now you do the opposite. You know, you want to be a salmon, not a tuna. You want to go against the current. So not with it. You know, tuna swim with the current, salmon goes against it. So you put your salmon, uh, salmon, uh, hat on or whatever. (laughs) Fins Uh, on. But it is the best time in history to expand your business. Because there are some great deals, opportunities out there. Um, And I'm going to talk about what kind of school to buy only in this workshop. I'm not going to give it today because you got to come to the workshop to get that. Uh, There's certain types of expansion. And I'm going to talk about creative financing options. I've opened nine schools. I've never borrowed money from a bank to do it. And I own Mm. four of my five buildings without ever having to go in a bank and, and buy those buildings. So there's ways to creatively do it. In my first center, I bought with $5,000. I opened with five grand. So is it easy to do? No, but you know what? I, somebody has done, and I have clients who have done it too. So you don't need a billion dollars 
dollars or a million dollars or 3.2 million to open a school. You could do it on a lot more budget. I'm going to give you some great ideas. And who should attend this? Basically, anybody interested in expanding your locations. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem with having only one school is you have all your eggs in one basket. You know, we've had clients who've had fires in the schools. We recently had a client lose their school in uh, Louisiana due to a hurricane. Um, so sometimes when you have all your eggs in one basket, diversification helps to spread that out. Um, so I'm going to talk about that kind of expansion as well. And I'm going to talk about some hidden gems out there and how to find these schools without necessarily going on the help or the uh, for sale signs and go to a broker because I'm not a big fan of uh, child care brokers. I'm going to talk about that as well. So there's a lot of secrets in there. I'm not going to give away the secret sauce today. You've got to come to the child care we imagine <laughs> and get the secret sauce. Awesome. I love that. I can't wait to see the session. And uh, if you guys still need tickets, you can go to childcare-reimagined.com or childcaresuccesssummit.com and get your tickets. We kick off on the morning of October 14th. Um, and if you're listening to this later, come to the 2021 summit to be announced in terms of date and location because it will be the 10th anniversary of the event and I have a lot of amazing things in store <laughs> for the 10th anniversary. Um, with regard to uh, the note that you just made, the comment you made about having multiple locations and being able to, it's almost like a shell game. Like you have more opportunities to move things around versus if you just have one, you don't have the flexibility in operation management, leadership and staffing as you do when you have multiple, you're able to like get what I call economies of scale. And so yes. I just wanted to kind of reiterate that for the listeners because um, it's a huge success principle of owning multiple sites. It's the why of why to go from one to two, two to three, three to 10, because as one example, you guys have a sub, a substitute teacher process and you're sharing subs. You have a backup bench. Like the biggest issue I see, Brian, is that people don't have a backup plan for staffing and then they're not able to travel or they're not able to enjoy their life because they're still stuck in the classroom covering ratio. And it's just even at the owner level. And I'm like, ah, oh, you guys, you got to fix this. So you and Carol have been instrumental in really also coaching people in our academy on how to leverage your multiple sites in terms of staff management, in terms of coverage, in terms of operational productivity, efficiencies, profit margin, all those secret sauce components. And I'm sure you'll be sharing some of that in this workshop as well. Yeah. It's, a lot of people don't understand five schools are much easier to run than one. Mm -hmm. And I wrote that at Childcare Millionaire and it seems so contradictory and it does not seem possible. And the hardest school to open is number two for everybody. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't understand that as well. Well, I just did it one time. How do I open number two? Well, a lot of times people are so emotionally invested in that first center with their time, their effort, energy, and emotion that when they have to step away from that control of giving control over to a third person, to a second person there, the delegate, it's hard for them to do it. They never go to number two right. because they don't want to give up control there because they like perfection. Once you do two, you could do 10. Yeah. This, once you do two, it gets much easier. In yeah. That. Wash, rinse, talk repeat. About that. Love that. The other principle that you just mentioned that we've never really talked about, but is hugely important is debt. And so I'm actually following kind of a Ramsey approach, a Dave Ramsey money management approach. I'm a fan of his around paying off debt so that, you, and it's, he's got a baby step program and I'm not here to promote Dave Ramsey, but it's super smart to pay off debt, buy cars in cash, um, buy schools in cash or try to, you know, pay down your debt as soon as possible because carrying those loans is financially not a smart thing to do over time. And people get into debt in this country and they get it, they get used to leasing vehicles and carrying debt and yeah. it's going to be fine. And then they start having a, you know, pay Peter to pay Paul and all of these things where they're shifting around debt all the time. And I just think what you've done is so smart, Brian, because you have followed that approach of either buying in cash or quickly paying off your debt. And now you and Carol are going, you know, 26, 28 times to Jamaica. Well, it's hard to do that and have that free cash flow if you're drowning in debt and, and you grow too fast or you buy too many locations 
not smartly. So I just wanted to also underscore that as part of this podcast, because that's kind of also a, been a secret to your success, I think. Yeah, I mean, I I can't say I built the business debt free, but I'm debt free now. And I right. every single one of my buildings I paid off in five years. I had a five year payoff plan on every single one of them, and I worked mm-hmm. really hard to get that done. And the, the amount of interest I've saved is hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that is that is money in the bank that adds to retirement. So and when you hit a pandemic like today, you don't have to worry about you know making a thirty thousand dollar a month mortgage payment, which I have clients struggling to make those right now yep. because I don't have that that debt structure. So whether you're you know you have that debt now, it doesn't matter. Today Today's a new day, and we can help you in the Child Care Success Academy. Just change your mindset around that, and then five, ten years from now, you're in the position that I'm in. And again, Chris, a lot of the stuff you taught me many years ago, and I was on the track, but you just helped refine that. And I've done more in my business in the last five years than I had done in the 15 years previous, thanks to you and your strategy. So, you know, I, I couldn't be more grateful for what you've done, and this is my payback to you, helping you build your business, being a coach on your team. This is my pay- payback as way of things. You know, I, I've been to Jamaica probably 20 of those 28 times since I've been on your team. Mm-hmm. So I've been able to do more um, thanks to the things you've taught and the, the debt structure and things like that. So thank you. Yeah. yeah thanks, you and, too. Man, and thank you guys. I mean, you have more than any coach really. Um, I've just, I've seen you implement. I've seen your brilliance. I've seen from the very first time you gave a 10 minute talk in one of our platinum plus meetings and you were the quiet guy who kind of sat at the table and didn't really share a lot. And you just like absorbed, absorbed, absorbed. And when you, when you came up for the very first time after being in our program for about six months and you did a 10 minute talk, you blew us away. And we were like, holy cow, who is this Brian Dupre guy? (laughs) And you have just blossomed. You've, you've constantly been working, sharpening your saw, always working on your mindset, always coaching and leading and helping and just constantly, you know, continuous improvement. And I just want to give you that shout out because I've seen you on this journey become an incredible coach and trainer and leader over, over this time, an entrepreneur. Um, and then when you reached out to me and wanted to become a coach on my team two and a half years ago, three years ago, three and a half years ago, whatever it was, May of 2017, um, it's been an amazing journey. And then you started doing strategy sessions and coaching calls for folks. So let's talk a little bit about that. You've been doing this now for a couple of years. Do you happen to have on the top of your head how many strategy sessions you've done to date, roughly? Do you have that uh, in your yeah, brain? Yeah, it's like 350 <laughs> of these calls. Wow. Uh, I think 350 calls. That's so a that's lot of strategy awesome. sessions, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Yeah, and that's awesome. I've, I've loved about 348 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I know. they're Probably not two I didn't like. <laughs> yeah. But it means yeah. 99% of the time I'm really enjoying helping people out. Sometimes you get a negative Nelly on the phone who doesn't really want to be helped. That's okay. Right. So let's talk about those. So your strategy sessions that you're doing, and we refer to those all the time, helping listeners of the and viewers of this podcast take the next step by offering them a free strategy session with a coach, which is usually yourself. Um, They're extremely powerful and they're intended to be around 45 minutes. They often go longer because you're a sweetheart and you stay on with people and you give, give, give. So talk a little bit more about how they work, what goes on and what makes them so powerful. It's a 45 minute coaching test drive. I'm going to ta- coach you for 45 minutes and I'm going to take, I'm going to come into your business and I'm going to take a deep dive look at the pain points, the things that are causing you pain in your business. We all have it. We all have things that just really a pain in your side. And right now there's three things that are hitting everybody and it's enrollment, staffing, and working on your business and not in it. People are being stuck in the grind and they're having to cover classrooms. And so those are the three things that I'm getting on 99.9% of the call. So I have go-to fixes for all three of these things. And I start working. What I do with, with a client, and, and you taught me this, Chris, is I take a client. See, when you're in a forest 
and you're going through, you can't see the trees, everything in front of you because there's just trees. You can't actually see the forest. All you can see is the trees right in front of you. So what I'm going to do and what you taught me to do is to take the person up to a 10,000 foot view and look down on the forest Mm -hmm. and you can see your whole business laid out. So by doing that in the 45 minute deep dive, I'm pulling them in to look down on their business and they're seeing hidden blind spots, things that are causing them pain. And we help to solve those pain points. And what I'll do is I give them concrete ideas to implement immediately in their business and turn that you could basically turn those ideas into revenue. Probably the average call, they're making 10, 20, $30,000 worth of it just changes in their business to the positive that they're going to get increased the revenue by 20, $30,000. I had one guy, he said, you know what? You just made me $50,000 on a 45 minute call. I was like, okay, send me half. We'll call it even. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But anyway, I love giving ideas like that. And I have a lot of them. They're go-tos. And you've got to get on a strategy session to learn what those are. Uh, There's no obligation. uh, There's no cost. We do charge a small um, $49 holding fee. And that's just to, if you don't show up, it gets for my time. But other than that, if you show up for the call, we're going to fully refund that $49. There's no catch. There's no gimmick. There's no bait and switch. We do show up. We do have other coaches that do these. You may not get me. You might get one of our other coaches on our team. Um, But each one is going to be the same. It's going to be solving your pain points and helping you see a little bit what coaching can do for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a lot of fun. We have a lot of fun. I love that. I love the 10,000 foot view when you're in the weeds and you can't literally see past the blinders that are here. And then we broaden them out. Like literally a coach is, is trained and you're certified through John Maxwell, as am I, to, to ask questions and dig in and explore and peel back the layers to allow the client to view what's going on in his or her business. So I just love that, Brian. If you are listening to this and it's time for you to finally jump in and meet Brian and learn about this process and it's incredible, incredible process, you can go to childcaresuccess.com and click on book a strategy call or book a coaching session. It's at the very top of the page, a little button there, and then I'll take you over to the page and you can sign up with and get on Brian's calendar. Um, yeah, we will say that uh, because of time constraints, I only have so many hours in a day that we do limit our strategy sessions to center owners and usually licensed for about 49 or more kids. It's just for a time sequence. I've never um, I've never been a, a director, so I don't usually deal with directors. I'm an owner. Um, right. So I deal with owners only. And um, we, we, we just don't work with home daycares either right now. Right. Actually, we might, but right now. So if you're a larger center, 49, we do have tools and strategies that can help you uh, in, our, in our page. But it's fun. It's fun to limit. If you get there and says you don't qualify, I just don't want you to be heartbroken. Um, but it doesn't mean that we don't have, we, we won't reach out with some tools that can. Exactly. Yeah. And for that uh, person, either a, a, a family child care, home daycare, or a small center, we have the enrollment boot camp. We have the leadership mastery course to work on your culture and your hiring. We have the hire right masterclass. We have so many, so many resources there in the products part of the, the, the website. So thanks for saying that. Um, what are some of the biggest pain points that you're helping with? So you did mention the, the big three. Yep. You mentioned enrollment, staffing, or getting out of overwhelm, right? So on the... Um, enrollment side of the house. What are some of the things, like how do you start working with people to get them to come up to that 10,000 foot view? Are there specific questions you ask to dig in? I actually work with them on the mindset first and then we work on the other stuff because most of the issue has to do with the the owner uh, working in the business. So they don't have time to work on enrollment because they're busy changing diapers and driving the bus. So unless I can get them Ah, working on the business, nothing I teach them with Roma is going to help. So I have to focus on the mindset first. So that's what I take them is to show them how to have time to work on a Roma. So yeah. once I do that, and, and usually it's something simple as teaching them how to set an hour or two a day uninterrupted. And which is hard for some director owners to do. And we, uh, 
theory that we were taught is red light, green light, yellow light, is putting something on the door. Red light on the door means you do not interrupt me unless it's an absolute emergency. And try to red light at least an hour a day to work on your business. Mm -hmm. And you're working on the enrollment pieces. You're working on the staffing. You're solving issues. But if you never have any time to work on any of this stuff, it's irrelevant if I'm going to teach you anything because you have to be able to find the time to do it. So that's what I always start with that. In the enrollment, I have go-tos to help you uh, with enrollment. There's a lot of marketing strategies that we teach on these strategy sessions. Um, You have to come into a strategy session to learn some of the secret sauces uh, of enrollment. But there's a couple things that I teach on a phone call that I teach nowhere else except on a strategy session. I don't teach Mm. it at workshops. I don't teach it because I want to show them the power of coaching and the power of our Child Care Success Academy. They're going to learn it inside our academy because it's just like a little secret nugget. And it's a game changer. It really it's it's all about sales strategy. And a lot of people don't realize, Chris, that a tour is a sales call. You're selling somebody and there's psychology behind selling. And I've done a lot of studying in this and I, I break it down to the psychology and I tell them how to read, basically how to read people's minds when they're coming in. Not, not in a traditional mind reading sense, but knowing what yeah. they're thinking and how to, you guys are not going to like this word, but manipulate them. It's not really manipulating. It's more like guiding them to make a decision to choose your center over the competitor. And there's ways yep. that you can do that. And we're going to help you mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. So a couple things that we um, provide our academy folks with on that is we do deeper training on these principles. For example, Robert Cialdini, he's a guy that I studied when I was putting all of these tour secrets together. When I first started teaching enrollment boot camp and tour um, uh, strategies for how to actually sell on a tour, but doesn't that doesn't feel salesy was Cialdini's book, um, Persuasion, The the Art of Influence, which is a a mind-blowing book. It's a top-selling book of all time in terms of business persuasion techniques and or overall persuasion techniques. And so recently I did a session for the Academy on the secret sauce of how I took Chaldini's book and I basically created this these tour secrets for what you're saying. The mind reading, the how to actually understand what's in your prospect's head, address it, talk parent speak to that parent, build that rapport and trust through these techniques and use them to influence. Influencing other people in your life will always come in handy, whether you're trying to influence a parent, a staff member, your child, your spouse, right? Or any, or a car, a used car guy. So those techniques, Brian, and so that, that's just one thing. Um, Another thing is with sales, we're bringing um, sales expert, Eric Loff home to the summit here in two weeks to do a session on the inner game of selling and doing great tours and the outer game of selling and doing great tours. Right. And so we're, when we give you guys a strategy session, you're getting a tiny spoonful, like, cause we don't want to like overwhelm you with all of this amazing stuff that we have to share with you over the year that you'll be with the Academy. And again, most Academy folks are with us three, four, five, six years, but just a couple things that came up for me when you were saying that was when you, you know, we'll, exa- we'll show you guys what to do. We'll exactly give you the roadmap for how to change your business in your life, but you have to be able to get out of the kitchen making sandwiches in order to actually st- start doing baby steps of implementation. So I love what you shared. All of it is so good. And I love the at one hour, just start with one hour a week or a day or three times a week and just block it in and just start implementing. So I love that. Um, Translating over or uh, uh, switching topics to your book. So people are loving, you've mentioned it a couple of times, your book, Child Care Millionaire. I hear this all the time when I'm working with new clients. They're like, oh, do I get to meet Coach Brian? I love him. I love him. I love his book. I've read Child Care Millionaire. I've dog-eared it. So there are huge fans out there. Um, And you also then co-wrote a book with me, which is the Happiness Guide for Early Childhood Educators. It's our teacher happiness book, our teacher mindset book. Yeah. And so talk a little bit about both of those books. I actually have copies in my other office so I can run and show them and grab them. But what makes you the proudest of having written those books? 
Well, Child Care Millionaire was the first one. And it was basically just writing down different thoughts. And the idea came, Carol and I were sitting on a beach in Jamaica. And I was, every, while I'm here, I actually plan out my next eight to nine to 10, 12 weeks when trip to trip. So while I'm here, I'm doing goal setting, I'm planning, we're working. It's a kind of a working vacation. And I said, you know what, Carol, I want to write a book about my experience. And it, of course, I didn't think Child Care Millionaire, the name, I just said it kind of as a joke to Chris Murray. She's like, I love that. <laughs> love that name. And I actually thought I did like it for, at first. And it turns out that, you know, it, it's very simple to Simple to read, takes about four hours to read, but there's 101 nuggets in the book that uh, get, that gives you bite-sized changes, just small little incremental changes that you could do. You could do one of these a week or one of these a day, and eventually you could change your business one little idea at a time. And uh, it, it's been a game changer. It, it, it has sold really well, and um, I get a lot of good comments and feedback, and, and that, there it is. And uh, it, it's a... Uh, and very humbling for me, uh, this high school educated guy from Maine um, that could that could write a book. I always thought I'd write one, but I didn't think it would be about. A, I thought it'd be a spy novel or something like that. So, and then the most proudest I am is the second book, and that's the Happiness Guide that I wrote with Chris. And because Chris is my mentor, I love Chris. She's she's made changed my life so much, and I wanted to write a book with her. But I realized that, you know, everybody writes books for owners and directors. But the most important person in a team is the person watching the children. Yep. You know, they are far more important than the owner and the director, because without them, there is no owner and a director. So and I realized that ha after hiring, you know, I've had 700 people probably work for me in the 23 years. I think that's the number I'm at. So, you know, I had a lot of turnover before Chris Murray. And so. With these people, I realized a common theme was a lot of them had issues. They had baggage, self-esteem issues. And a lot of the people that we had turnover with, it was all about just a paycheck. It wasn't really a career. It was more like a, just a job. And I started looking for people that wanted to make a difference, that were change makers. And that's what we wanted to do with the Happiness Guide is write a book for people that uh, wanted to make a difference in the world and change the mindsets of the teachers to be one of one of uh, from that making a difference place. And we realized it has been a, a, a total big hit amongst them. Uh, we give this as a copy to every new employee that onboards in our company, a big hit. And we, we have literally sold thousands and thousands of copies of people that just buy them for every single one of their staff members. Yep. And um, Chris, you wrote an amazing, the, the part that you, I, I'm a faxer guy. So I wrote just the facts of the gems of the call of the book. And Chris said, nope, it needs a little bit of more storyline. So you brought the book to life with Jillian and Teresa, uh, Teresa. That's right. And th oh, that just brought it so much to life. And I absolutely love that. Uh, so talk a little bit about you, how you brought that book to life. And yeah, you thank you. It. Yeah, that was super fun for me to be able to input the storyline. What happened is, is in the ultimate child care marketing guide, which is my first book, which is the pencils book. I had a story line like that going through because it was a very nuts and bolts, maybe even a little bit dry, some might say, book, because it was based on the four pillars, metrics, market, um, message, and media. And so my editor, because it was edited by Red Leaf Press with an actual professional editor, and she was like, let's do a anecdotal story about Juanita, I think it was Juanita and Tom, her husband, who own a center. And I carried their story, Juanita and Tom's story, throughout the book. And then when I was working with you on all the nuggets for the happiness guide, it hit me like a bolt of lightning. I was like, oh, my God, this needs that Tom and Juanita piece that needs Jillian and Teresa and their director, Donna. And so we took that idea of an anecdotal story of actual, you know, I modeled it on people I was actually thinking about in the ECE world and how they took the nuggets that you shared and they input them into their life inside the classroom and outside the classroom. And they actually, they got stronger mindsets and better, happier lives because they acted on the nuggets that they were reading in this book. So it was a really fun collaborative effort between you and me. And I just, um, 
that book will stand the test of time long after you and I have probably left the planet because people are buying it, especially like, you know, Christmas is coming up and people, we're going to do a Black Friday special, but people are buying this for Christmas presents for all their teachers and ongoing. I love that it's in their onboarding at your school. And you know what makes it super cool is that because you're the author like, I would be so impressed. I would actually probably be intimidated if I was one of your new teachers because I'd be like, my <laughs> boss my boss wrote this. This is incredible. So I'm sure you get a little bit of that. Uh, I, I actually don't get in the centers much anymore. My wife runs <laughs> the company. I'm too busy helping other people. Right. Um, but owners don't... Owners need to read this book before they give it to their team members, because uh, I've had a lot of owners. Well, I don't need to read that. It's for teachers. No, it, it, owners are teachers. You're the coach. You're the coach of your team. You're the teacher yeah. of your people. Yeah. And you're the one that has to have the best mindset. You know, the, the, the mindset of a team is only as strong as the leader's mindset. Mm -hmm. And the director and the owner have to be the one that set the example. So the director and the owner have to be the one that read this first, and then you give it to your team members. Because uh, then you could be the example for them. Uh, and, and there's a lot of owners out there that need need help as well. And this, yeah. uh, this, this is why we wrote this for them. Uh, Fantastic. So um, we're going to wrap up now and I'm going to have you just share some final thoughts. But before I do, I want to mention that you um, were on our podcast, one of the first episodes you did with your wife, Carol, and it was so fun. And I think it was episode eight or something yeah. of Child Care Rockstar Radio. So if you guys want to listen back to episode eight after this as a follow on to hear Carol and, and Brian share their story of how they met and how they've developed their family and their schools and the process and all of that. Um, it's an amazing story. It's one of my favorite episodes, especially also how to work with your husband or wife as a spousal, you know, management leadership team. It's not easy. And you guys make it, um, you, you're just amazing with, with how you divide the responsibilities and how you share that across the husband wife relationship. So that's an amazing thing. So I wanted to tell the listeners that, and then, um, this is episode 87. So it's kind of cool that we've gone from episode eight all the way to 87. I don't know why it took me so long to bring you back because you're amazing. And this episode is amazing. So just thanks for coming back and being a guest again and sharing everything today because this has been awesome. Uh, it has been my pleasure, Chris. And because there's so many people between eight, eight and 87 that were fantastic. Yeah. You know, when I get on calls with people, the number one thing I hear is people hear about you through the podcast and mm -hmm. hear about Child Care Success Company and the Child Care Success Academy. And one thing I want to leave people with is don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, a lot of times we're, we're here, we think we're heroes as child care owners. We have to have all the answers and we don't. You know, you helped me five years ago. I didn't think I needed help, but I did need help. And there's going to be somebody listening right now thinking, oh, I could manage myself through this crisis. And you know what? It's okay to ask for help. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you get through this crisis and our team here in the Child Care Success Summit, uh, Academy, rather. And uh, don't be afraid. Go to childcaresuccess.com, book a, book a call with one of our coaches, and uh, let us let us start you on the road to getting um, getting your Get, get back into your business working on it and be happier. I've had so many people lately, Chris, that said, just not having fun anymore. Yeah. If you're not having fun in childcare anymore, you need to get out of call with me. And I, you know, 45 minutes can change your life. Yes, I, I'm certain that it will. Uh, Brian Dupre, Coach Brian, thank you so much. We love you and you have influenced so many people through your books and the 350 strategy session coaching calls that you've done. It's just been incredible working with you. Um, I can't say enough. If you guys don't have Child Care Millionaire, definitely get a copy on Amazon as well as the happiness guide for all of your teachers and make sure you read it yourself. Um, and there's a leadership section in there for leaders as well. Um, and thank you so much. And so now it's time for you to go back to the pool there in Jamaica and get a virgin daiquiri since you're not drinking. Um, and I have to give you major props on that as well, because to not be able to have a little um, cocktail during COVID time has got to be very difficult. So I'm going to leave everybody with a view, Chris. Oh, right. nice. And some music. 
Oh, oh my go. God, I'm so jealous. View of my room here. So. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you so much, Brian. Big hugs to Carol and everybody on your team. Take care and God bless. And thanks for being here on episode 87 of Child Care Rockstar Radio. Thank you. Love you Bye. all.